The new Beyond Baskets 2 stamp set by Melanie Menchinger is a holiday stamping must-have. Of course, you can mix and match this set with any of Melanie's basket-filling beauties. But today on Stamp TV, I want to show you how great this set is all by itself. One of my biggest challenges when giving gift cards is finding the perfect way to present them. So I'm going to show you how to turn a Christmas card into the perfect Christmas gift. Let me show you the tools and products you need to make this card project. First, you're going to need some of the stamps from the Beyond Baskets 2 stamp set. And I'm using the box stamp. I'm also using the gift lid. And then I'm going to use this piece right here, which you may not recognize what that is when you see it, but it will become perfectly clear when you see what I do with it. Then I'm going to use the Handle with Care greeting stamp, and I'm also going to use the Celebrate greeting stamp. I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink, and along with that I'm going to use a Copic marker, and this one is R46, which is strong red. Then I have a pair of Cutter B scissors, I have some quarter inch uh, mini glue dots, and then I have some of the quarter inch pop dots. And you know, I'm not 100% sure if are, these are quarter inch uh, glue dots, but I know they're the mini glue dots. So if you look on our website at GinaKDesigns.com and you see mini glue dots, they'll be the right size. So to begin, I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs craft cardstock. And I'm going to stamp a gift, and then I'm going to stamp this piece right here, and I'm going to stamp the lid. And I'm going to do all of that using the Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink. There are so many uses for this box that I've already seen gracing the galleries at Stamp TV that you have to just go over to Stamp TV and type in Beyond Baskets 2 all as one word in our gallery search and you will be amazed at the beautiful projects you see just using this box alone. Okay, so there is the box stamp. The next stamp is going to be this particular one. These are actually box flaps. So I'll stamp that one right here. And then the last one is going to be the box top or the gift, the present. And I'll stamp that one right on top. There we go. So now you can see I have all of those stamped out and in no particular order really you can do that in any order you want because these are all going to be cut out. Now I'm going to color the ribbon using the R46 strong red Copic marker and I'm going to do that you can see it really gets to be a nice deeper red color when you color this on craft. It's almost like a cherry red. This is a very good match for our cherry red ink. And I really like using craft sometimes for focal images because it just gives a whole different feel to your card. So if you've got some craft cardstock at home, some of our craft, give it a try. It also works really well with Copic markers. And you can see I did not heat set this black ink at all, and I'm not having any trouble with it smearing. I know some people like to heat set it first, and others prefer to use memento black, but I've been using a lot of this lately with Copics, and I'm having lots of luck. Memento ink is a great ink too, so whichever one you use, you're certainly going to get a nice image. I think I'll actually color the inside of these two because the back of that ribbon you would be able to see. All right, and then we'll color these parts of the ribbon. I guess that's going to be inside there. 
And I'm not doing any shading on this at all. I just want nice, solid, vibrant cherry red for my gift box ribbon. And there we go. So now I have my ribbon all colored in. And my next step is to stamp in black. I'm going to grab the black ink and the handle with care stamp. I'm going to ink that up. And I'm going to stamp that kind of on an angle right here on the box, like that. Then I'm going to grab the Celebrate stamp, and I'm going to stamp that on this little flap piece. Right, excuse my head if it gets in the way. Right about there. Okay, so I have Celebrate and Handle with Care. Now I'm going to trim these out using my Cutter B scissors. And these are pretty easy pieces to trim. Pretty straightforward. Just cut around the perimeter. And the craft cardstock is pretty easy to cut. It's not a super thick cardstock. It's still nice for a card base, but it's pretty easy to cut. So I'll cut all these out, and then we'll get to assembling our gift card holder. So now I've cut out the box, and I've cut out the flaps and the box top, and I just used a little bit of mono adhesive to adhere the flap right over the top of the little box. So you can see that looks like a box opened that just came in the mail. And if you want, you can not use this part. You can just use the bottom part and the lid, but I just thought that was so much fun, and it gave me a little bit of an extra frame to stamp celebrate, so I wanted to use both. Now what I've done here is I've made a little card base using the Merry Little Christmas Pattern Paper Pack. That's a Gina K Designs Pattern Paper Pack. And then I cut this little border out using my Silhouette Cameo. Of course, there are all kinds of punches and dies that do the same thing. You can use any kind of little decorative piece going down the side of your card. And if you don't have something like that, use a little bit of ribbon going down the side. Either way, just decorate the side of your card with some little embellishment piece. I have this pattern paper mounted on some of our cherry red cardstock, and the whole thing is mounted on a craft card base. Now I've left that blank inside so I can write a nice message or stamp a nice greeting inside. And now I'm going to assemble the front of the card, and that's where my gift card is going to be. So I'm going to start by using some of the quarter inch pop dots. And I'm going to use them right at the bottom of this box down here. I want to create almost like a little pop dot pocket. And you don't have to use so many, but I want it to go straight across. Now I want to show you something else. Let me just slip these back off. This is a great way to not make any waste. What you can do is you can take a piece of this, the part that you would normally throw away, cut that off, peel one side off, and you can make a little bottom for this box right across the bottom like that. You can trim that off. So now you've used part of those that pop dot thing that you would normally throw away. There, I'll use another little piece on the side there and another little piece on the side here. But for those of you who like to use the pop dots themselves, you can certainly make a nice little row going across the bottom. But this really does save some money, and it makes use of the part that you would throw away. So I kind of like that. All right, so this piece is ready to... Let me grab one more little piece here that I have. We'll really make it snug. Cut that little excess off. I don't want that to show over the top. This piece is going to sit toward the bottom of my card. And here I have a gift card. This is to a, a local salon nearby that somebody gave me as a gift. And I want to make sure that that doesn't fall out, but it's also down far enough. So I think what I'm going to do is just move it to about here. So that's where I'm going to position the bottom of the box. Let me pull off the little covers here. There we 
we go. They're staticky. They want to stick to me. Okay. So right about here. Let's just check that again. Yeah, right about, we'll go up just a hair higher, like right about there. Okay. And now I am going to use a couple pop dots for this. I'm going to kind of have that lid popped open, like it's just popped off the box. So I'll put a couple pop dots on there. And you can see our craft cardstock does bleed through if you're using Copic markers. You don't need a lot of those. I think I'll just put one up there. I'm going to use them more toward the top. This way that gift card won't get in the way. Okay. And I'm going to pop that kind of opening right about there. Like that. Let's angle it a little bit. Don't press it down too much until you know exactly where you want it. Now I'm going to slip this gift card in here like that. Let's see, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll slip it underneath and then put this on. And then I can angle the card a little bit like it's coming out of the box. And then to secure that down, you can also, I'm going to, I think I might move this whole thing down just a hair for my finished card project. And you can manipulate this a little bit if you want the whole thing down. Let me peel that off. Just down a hair. Just didn't look balanced to me. There we go. Okay. And you can pop that on there with a pop dot. And let me show you how to do that. Let's move this with it. Okay. So actually I've been a glue dot. So just grab a glue dot. Now these are kind of gummy, kind of like when you buy a gift card and it's attached to a um, the card part of the gift card. You know, the paper part of the gift card. It's the same kind of thing. So that'll rub right off the gift card once they pull it off the front of your card. And there we go and then press everything down. There we go. And that'll just keep it in place so it's kind of angled up. Otherwise, when you turn it the right way, upside down like this, or when you're standing it upright, the card will slip down and become straight again, and we want it to stay on that angle. So there is my finished card project with a gift card in the front, lots of room on the inside to write whatever I want, and a great way to present a holiday gift. Not only is the Beyond Baskets 2 stamp set perfect for holiday gift cards, but by mixing these fun boxes and bags with birthday or other pattern papers, you can wrap up the perfect gift card for any occasion.